And here I have a, an element with a little bit of a curve to it. I could model it with the curve embedded right from the start, but a way better option is to model it straight. So I'm only limited to using sharp 90 degree angles and then uh, modify, uh, then bend it after the fact. This way uh, the curvature is going to be more precise and I'll have a easier time uh, creating the shape. So I'm just going to cut off a square and then transform it in place. Since clip is a separate element, I'm going to hide the rest of the model and just focus on creating a ammo clip. Set it to uniform space. I do need the reference for the top of the ammo clip, so I'm gonna quickly look it up on the internet. I'll just copy the kind of the AK-47 type of a look, because it's the closest I can get to this type of a bend clip. Okay, I got a reference on my other screen. I'm gonna quickly pull a block out shape with primitives. I'm not gonna do a physically correct clip, just kind of wanna make sure that the top part is Decent enough. Control enter. I'm gonna walk hide this part up until where it enters the gun. And then using the pose tool, I'm gonna add a little bit of a bend here. The longer you drag this curve, uh, the, the line, the smoother the transition is gonna be. And I want it relatively smooth here. Now from the top, we'll make an interesting looking shape. And then I will grab uh, pose again. And it will scale this part inward. I can use the primitive here, probably a little bit better. Cut off excessive parts. Now unhide the rest of the clip, smooth it with Ctrl S. Actually, I might need a little bit more resolution first. Okay, so rise up, smooth. Okay, we got a good start. Cut off. Looking good. Mm. I'm gonna add a little bit of a bevel at the, at the back, but if I don't wanna run it all the way up. So, box hide again, uh, not move box hide. So maybe somewhere up, up to here. And then cut off and hide, looking sexy. So now, you know, originally I wanted a little bit of the bottom to stick out like a separate part. I need to keep this as one piece because I'm gonna be bending it. So I'll add... I'll do a box extrude. Or I can just use the post tool again. Something like this. Control D to deselect. Avoiding straight lines. This is a good start now. I want these two lines. Uh, I'm gonna use primitives. Control enter. Box hide again. And then invert it. And here I'm gonna cut off this part at all. All together. Okay, now that we are ready, we I'm gonna do the warp. And the, what warp does is it bends and twists. First thing first, we need to set up the axis properly. I think we're getting somewhere. Uh, let's 
position it where I need it to be though. The way it works is that you need to establish the kind of the origin, the pivot point at which it's gonna bend. So I'm moving this circle to until I get uh, the result I'd be more happy with. And for the start angle, I'm gonna set it back to. Well, it looks like zero is not an option, but. Set it to 90. Okay, this is good. Now, bend this angle is a little bit too much for me. I don't want forward step. So I'm gonna move this circle until I get something cool. Mm, we don't want segments. Yeah, I guess what I can do is make sure that the bottom part is as flat as I need it to be. And then adjust the placement of the gizmo to get the proper length but I guess this is the best I would get press and enter moving in place rotating a bit I want this part to be slightly more straight so I'm gonna use a pose tool and now I can duplicate it the second clip that is uh, duct taped to the first one. This is the nature of designing things when you look at it from a different angle, especially like in, in 3D. A lot of times it looks fine close up, but then you zoom out and overall it looks like shit. So you grab a chunk and you delete it.
Alright guys, so here's what I ended up with. It's not fully done concept, but it, it should be enough to show you the process. The gun port is still missing. I would approach it the same way I've done everything else, just split out the central part and work uh, around that by adding primitives and, and so on. Initially it was supposed to be just a block out so I can do my line work faster. And I can still use it this way, but if you feel, if you're satisfied with this level of quality, you can use this as a high resolution mesh and start to apologize in it and start creating your low resolution mesh. What I like about this approach of working both in 2D and 3D at the same time is that in the end you end up both with a nice looking line drawing, which is great, and I, I still very much prefer doing design in, in line art uh, because of a faster iteration. But you also end up with a 3D model, which is great because you, you get a very realistic representation of all the overlaps and you can render it. Let's say you finished your block out and you're happy with it and you want to paint on top of it to add some smaller details. In 3D code, you just all you need to do is switch to a render tab and apply the materials that uh, you you're happy with. I'm not gonna go too in depth, but like you can do it in multiple ways. You can just apply matte caps, which is a very simple shaders. You could also go into the paint room and actually texture the asset with uh, some of the smart materials that uh, 3D code comes with. So if I let's say I get, I get and just a disclaimer, I'm a very much a substance painter guy, um, but I believe I can just apply a smart material to the entire mesh. So it gives you this uh, the preview window. Smart materials uh, require ambient occlusion, so if I just uh, quickly bake it. With ambient occlusion baked, I can click on any of those metal materials and you can see the preview shows up. And this is the model without any materials on it. I'm gonna quickly make sure that I have a default matcap applied to the entire model. Previously, they used to affect how your textures are being, or materials are being displayed. An interesting thing is now I'm back to a sculpt room and ambient occlusion is still being displayed on my sculpt so you can preview your model with ambient occlusion on it if you bake it. You can start assigning different materials to different parts of the model to create a really nice base for uh, painting or photo bashing. I'm gonna apply a material to the entire mesh and the way I'm doing it by selecting, selecting the material and filling the whole layer with the fill bucket. So I'm just gonna fill a layer, yes. And it's gonna apply this material to the entire layer, which affects the entire mesh. Okay, and now with this material, what's, what's great about smart, smart materials is that you can preview your uh, model with the realistic PBR material applied to it without, and it's, it's really quick so you don't have to actually go ahead and texture Yeah, so you just press render button and it rend renders it out. In my case though, I don't want to do the paint over because uh, uh, the other two guns that I've uh, designed so far, they were line drawing. I want the, this third uh, assault rifle be a line drawing as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going over here and uh, to sculpt mode. So to render expert and let's call it gun test. So, so what applying the materials did it switched all my objects to, to surfaces, which is I guess the what 3D code needs to do in order to apply materials. Either way, right now they're really dense meshes and whenever you export the scene 30 code it will offer you to decimate the scene to optimize the poly count and here like uh, it's currently I have 40 million polys which is a ridiculous amount and I think we can work maybe like 
4 million should be fine because I don't want too many artifacts but I also want it to be relatively optimized. Uh, with the gun exported out I'm bringing it into ZBrush and you can see we have our thing right here. There's a minor artifact over here and I, I'm pretty sure it's caused by switching to the surface mode so I'll have to in investigate later but at this point it's not the point. So while 3D code offers a really fast and nice uh, rendering capabilities, what I like about ZBrush is that matte caps allow for some cool creative ways to display your mesh. So what I've done is I created this line drawing material and it lets me quickly create a line work based on the 3D model and it also offers a lot of parameters that I can play with. So there's a cavity detection that lets me uh, increase the amount of lines that are being captured and there's a cavity uh, the transition. It's nice because it lets you capture inner parts and outer parts. So I can use this to combine, to create several different screenshots and using them I can create pretty pretty detailed nice technical drawing that I can modify further in Photoshop and draw on top of it. On top of it. One of the problems though however is uh, ZBrush uh, when it comes to actually saving it out and rendering you can end up with a little bit of aliasing on the lines and I don't like that so you have to like crank, crank up your canvas size quite a bit uh, w when you're rendering out. Alternatively, if you have a ZBrush Keyshot bridge and a Keyshot for ZBrush license, you can render it in Keyshot, and I'll show you that this in a second. External render Keyshot, and I'll press BPR. So by default, Keyshot tries to bring all the materials that are applied to the model, and then in this case, it brought in my line work material, which doesn't really transfer over properly, but um, Keyshot has its own uh, tune outline material, so if I apply it to my model, you can see we are getting a really nice line work. And if you are, let's say, if you want it, want it to be like a 2D drawing, you can disable the shadows and the backdrop. One keep in, thing to keep in mind though, what you see here is not a pr proper representative of what's going to be rendered. So if you switch to a material editor here. So right now I'm using all the default settings. Contour quality is set to one. We can crank it up to five because I want my lines as beautiful as possible. Contour bit is set to one though, and that means one pixel. So whenever I'm gonna press render, the lines are gonna be pretty thin, even though here they do not appear to be thin at all. So I'm gonna show this to you in a second. And one of the key parameters in this material is this contra angle. So right now it's set to 60 and it basically puts a line wherever it's the camera sees a 60 degree angle. So if you set it to let's say 40, you're gonna have way more uh, lines and like the lower it is, the more you're gonna see but the messier your drawing is gonna end up looking. I like to play with it until I get a really good Result, I would be happy with. In this case, 60 is actually pretty good. Now, if I press render, control P, um, let's render it at uh, like 920. And then quality, uh, advanced control. Okay, should, okay, let's just press render and see what happens. So you can see the gun is rendered. Um, and because it's a relatively low resolution, the one pixel contour looks fine but there's some I'm losing some of the definition here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crank it up to 8k and it automatically constrains the aspect ratio which is good and if I render at 8k the lines are much more refined but they're also fairly thin and this is when I would start adding thickness so let's say I set it to 3 pixels and in here it becomes really ugly looking but if you render, lines look pretty good. There are minor artifacts here and there, but nothing major. I actually like that there is a little bit of a noisiness in certain areas. 
it adds more more to the character. Something like this I would actually probably redraw by hand because it doesn't seem to work at all here. But yeah, a uh, quick way to create a very detailed line drawing using your three existing 3D model and I can like uh, shell ejection port. I can ju just jump into Photoshop and go ahead and really detail out this area and plan it out and then bring it over to 3D and uh, I already have a model to work with. And if you're w working in a team where you're designing the concept and you have a 3D artist waiting for you for the, for the concept, you can give him this model and he or she can start retopologizing it and starting to work on a low resolution model while you're finalizing the smaller parts. So everyone wins and um, yeah, working both in 2D and 3D is, is a good way to it's a good way to mix the best of both worlds. Alright, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the next one.